Well guys, I've had my Mira 7 for about nine months now, and I really haven't done any type of deep clean. But I've noticed that every month since I started using the laser, I have to clean up the soot and debris that collects at the exhaust vent holes inside the laser cavity. I usually connect a small brush attachment to my shop vac and I vacuum it off. But in this example, I'm brushing it off with a soft toothbrush to show you how easily it comes off. Which got me to thinking, if it's getting this dirty this quickly inside the laser cavity, I wonder how dirty the exhaust fan is. Because a dirty exhaust fan with dirty blades is a less efficient exhaust fan. Which means I'm going to have to clean my exhaust fan. Which also means I'm going to have to remove it from the laser. So now I'm going to show you the steps I took to remove the Mira 7's exhaust fan from the laser. The first thing I did is I turned the Mira 7 off by turning the key. Next, I closed the lid to the laser and I told Lucy she had to leave her favorite place to go rest someplace else. I then began to move the laser so that I can gain access to the back. This next step is very important. Disconnect the power to the Mira 7 by unplugging it from the wall. Next, using a Phillips head screwdriver, loosen the hose clamp and remove the 6 inch duct from the back of the Mira 7's exhaust port. Now, if you have an external compressor, remove the quarter inch air hose from the air inlet port and put it aside. Now, I observe the output of the exhaust system and I can see signs of dirt and soot build up. So now that I have removed all the cables from the Mira 7, I can now begin to start to remove the fan. But rather than work in this tight cramped area, I decide to spin the Mira 7 180 degrees so that I can have plenty of room to work. I now move to the side that has the big red emergency shutoff button. I get the cabinet keys and I unlock both of the locks on the bottom door. Once unlocked, I open it and I remove it and I put it aside. I will be getting into that area later. I now grab a Phillips head screwdriver and I begin to unscrew the four screws on the back of the Mira 7's exhaust port. I remove the panel and I put it aside. Now I can take my first look into this area. On the left, you have a black metal squirrel fan. This is the exhaust fan. And to the right, you have your internal air assist pump. This area is pretty small. The area is about 11 inches deep by 15 inches across and about 10 inches tall. It's going to be tight and cramped to work in this area. You'll see in a bit. The exhaust fan is attached to this white L-frame bracket that is screwed down to rubber mounts. These rubber mounts help reduce the noise and vibration from the spinning fan. There are two other rubber mounts on the other side of this bracket. The next thing I had to do is identify the wires coming from the exhaust fan and trace them to the power source. I noticed a bundle of wires close to the exhaust fan and that's where I'm going to start my search. I noticed that they are tie wrapped together. So I grabbed some small sharp dikes and I cut the tie wraps off so that I can separate the wires to get a better look. I now separate the wires and I can now see where the wires leave the exhaust fan. You can see this black heat shrink or sheathing that is housing three insulated wires. I continue to trace those wires and I notice that they are also connected to a capacitor. I can now conclude that it's the brown and blue wires that are the power cables for the fan. And I can see that these two wires are housed in black sheathing. So I follow the wires into the black spiral cable wrap and they continue to the left side of the machine. In order to remove this fan, I will have to disconnect the brown and blue wire from the 110 volt power source. I now cut off all the white tie wraps that are around the cluster of wires. I now move around the corner of the laser to get to the door that I removed earlier. In this area, you will find the other end of the black spiral cable wrap that is holding a number of cables. I reach into that area and I find the black cable that is housing the brown and the blue wire from the exhaust fan. These two wires connect to the lever DIN connector here. This is where the exhaust fan connects to the 110 power source, as well as the internal air assist pump and other devices in the Mira 7. I now want to trace these two wires and identify the ports that they are connected to. I see that the brown wire is connected to the first leftmost red lever, and the blue wire is connected to the middle yellow lever. So before I disconnect anything, I want to grab my phone and I want to take a picture of how it's connected now so that I can use it later as a reference. I will now lift up on the red lever. 
These levers are locked down pretty hard, so it's gonna take a little force to lift it up. Once the lever is up, I will pull out the brown wire and this will disconnect it from the power. I will now lift up on the yellow lever. This lever will also require a little bit of force to lift it. Once up, I pull out this blue wire. Removing it will disconnect it from power. Now that the ends have been disconnected, I'm going to want to free these wires from the cluster of cables that are inside the black spiral cable wrap. So I go to the other end of the cable wrap and I find the blue and the brown wires and I'm going to attempt to pull these wires out of the cable wrap. As I gently pull these wires, the wires are not pulling from the cluster of cables inside of the cable wrap. So I decide to unwrap the spiral wrap until it frees the wires from the exhaust fan. Once freed, I can now pull out the exhaust fan's power cable and I set it aside. Since the capacitor is connected to the blue and brown wires, I will unscrew it from the floor of the laser. This will now totally free the power cable. Which leaves only one more cable that I will have to remove. And that's the grounding cable right here. And that's attached to the metal frame of the exhaust fan. So I gently tug on this cable and I trace it to the other side and it's connected to a ground bar. So I get a screwdriver to disconnect it but the housing of the exhaust port is making it difficult to unscrew. So I go back to the other side and I just disconnect the grounding cable from the exhaust fan itself. I unscrew it and I set the screw aside for later. So now I'm gonna go inside this tight area where the exhaust fan is housed. You will now get a better look at the 90 degree frame bracket as well as the mounting screws and the rubber mounts. There are two screws on this side with washers and lock washers that screw into the mounts. And when I go over the jumper exhaust hose, you will see two more screws with washers and lock washers that are screwed into the rubber mounts. These four screws will have to be removed as well as one more screw that will loosen the hose clamp that will allow me to remove the hose from the inner exhaust port. It's important to use a screwdriver that fits upright in the cavity. I'm using a screwdriver that is seven and three quarter inches long, and I'm also using a beefy bit. It's a PZ2 bit. This fits perfectly into the screw head with no slippage. So now using my left hand, I insert the screwdriver into the cavity and I fit the screwdriver bit into the right back screw head. Once I feel that it is in the screw head, I remove my left hand leaving the screwdriver upright. I then insert my right hand to unscrew the screw. This is what worked for me. You will have to use whatever techniques that work for you in this tight area. This is definitely not easy. It's a challenge, but it can be done. I remove the screwdriver and then using my left hand, I insert it back into the cavity to place it on the front right screw head with my left hand. This time I am able to unscrew the screw using my left hand. I now go back in with the camera to take a better look and you can definitely see that both screws have been unscrewed. To remove the next screw, you will want to peek in from around the corner and you will be able to see the left front screw area. I then insert my right hand over the exhaust fan to place the screwdriver onto the right front screw head. I then begin to unscrew the screw. Now to get to the back left screw, you're going to have to peek through a small gap between the frame and the exhaust port housing. Here it is right here. While looking through this gap, using my right hand, I go over the exhaust fan to insert the screwdriver into that area so that I can place the screwdriver bit onto the screw head. Once I find it, I unscrew the last mounting screw. I do a quick inspection and it's obvious that the exhaust fan's mounting bracket has been unscrewed from the rubber mounts. I now slide the exhaust fan over to the left a bit so that I can insert a screwdriver into the cavity to loosen the hose clamp around the back inner exhaust port. Once loosened, I insert both hands over the exhaust fan 
and I grab a hold of the hose clamp and I slowly pull the clamp forward until it comes off the inner exhaust flange. I now grab a hold of the exhaust fan and I slowly begin to wiggle it out of the small cavity. I grab the fan's power cable and I pull the exhaust fan out of the mirror 7. I now move into the exhaust fan's housing area so that you can get a better look. It's very easy now to see the four rubber mounts that the fan bracket screws into. Removing this fan was definitely not easy because of the limited space. However, just being patient and using the correct screw bit will help get this fan removed. I now place the exhaust fan onto my workbench so you can take a better look at it. I turn the fan a bit and this is what you see from the back of the mirror 7. So now I'm going to turn the fan 180 degrees so you can see the other side. There's a small piece of 6 inch exhaust hose. I grab a screwdriver and I loosen the hose clamp so that I can remove this hose from the fan. You can now see the internal blades of the exhaust fan and these blades are coated with a thick layer of soot and debris. Having a dirty fan will decrease the fan's efficiency, so it's always important to have your fan as clean as possible. So keep your eyes open for my next video, and I will show you how I clean this fan. So guys, if you thought this video was helpful, please click on my Eon Partner link below. And if you're interested in purchasing an Eon laser, please tell them that Rico sent you. Well, this is going to go ahead and wrap up this video. And if you wouldn't mind, please like and subscribe to my channel. It would help me out a lot. So remember, if it happens in my world or the Mira 7, I'll definitely make a video of it. Have a great day and God bless. See you soon. Adios.